Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl every tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, you guys. Happy Thursday. I hope everybody's doing good. It has been a lot going on. Literally the past 24 hours, I had did a live stream yesterday. And near the end of the live stream, I was explaining to you guys how a lot of these major coastal cities are sinking. Let me go ahead and play this video. Check this out. Superstorm Sandy caught New York by surprise. We were a city with absolutely zero coastal protection. Can we defend one of the world's greatest cities from the next big storm and rising seas? If you get six feet of sea level rise, it would be a catastrophic flood. We know what the problem is. We now have to prevent the negative impact of climate change. I don't think the answer is retreat from all of lower Manhattan. All right, so you guys just check that video. And like I said, you can do your own research, but there's a lot of things going on in this world. And global warming is definitely real. You know, it's no longer conspiracy. It's something that's happening. We're seeing more and more crazy storms, hurricanes, fires, you know, super cold winters. It's getting creepy out here. Now, I've been telling you guys for a while that I feel in my spirit that there's going to be a lot of stuff going on in the month of September. I don't know why, but I've been feeling this way for a while. And so today is September 2nd. And if you guys do not know, like I had stated in my live stream prior about a week ago, um, September 2nd is the 16 year anniversary of when Kanye West basically got up during the hurricane relief and said that George Bush does not care about black people. The city has changed dramatically, tragically, and perhaps irreversibly. There's now over 25 feet of water where there was once city streets and thriving neighborhoods. Oh, I hate the way they betray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. If you see a white family, it says they're looking for food. And you know it's been five days because most of the people are black. And even for me to complain about, I would be a hypocrite because I've tried to turn away from the teacher TV because it's too hard to watch. I've even been shopping before even giving a donation. So now I'm calling my business manager right now to see what's, what is the biggest amount I can give. And, and just to imagine if I was, if I was down there and those are, those are my people down there. So anybody out there that wants to do anything that we can help with, with the setup, the way America is set up to help the, uh, uh, the poor, the, the black people, the, uh, the less well off as slow as possible. I mean, this is Red Cross is doing everything they can. We, we already realize a lot of the people that could help are at war right now fighting another way. And they, they, they've given them permission to go down and shoot us. And subtle, but in even many ways more profoundly devastating is the lasting damage to the survivors' will to rebuild and remain in the area. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call. In the past few days. And so the AP and several other media outlets are running stories on that because today is the 16-year anniversary. On top of that, a lot of news broke this morning about what went down on the East Coast with Hurricane Ida, okay? Um, if you guys do not know, New York, New Jersey, Philly, and a bunch of other cities on the East Coast were facing floodwaters, okay? They got rain of biblical proportions. Um, literally, within an hour, the streets of New York and Philly and so many other places were flooded, 22 people drowned yesterday, including a two-year-old child. Um, and they're probably going to end up finding even more people because a lot of people's basement homes were drowned. People were stuck in the subway. It was very scary, kind of reminiscent to what went down in China a few weeks ago when all those people were stuck in the tunnel and stuck in the subway system. Waters in the city of Zhengzhou. The flooding has killed at least 33 people after the area saw a year's worth of rain in just three days. Remy Innocencio reports. Ah. The deluge took the city and these commuters by surprise. Trapping hundreds in subway carriages as floodwaters rushed in. 
The flood was too powerful and people got washed away, this passenger said. Another person and I almost wanted to give up because we didn't have enough strength, but I used my arm to hang on. Many struggled to get out of the subway system themselves and back onto higher ground. With no other option, rescue workers were forced to cut open carriage roofs and pull people to safety before any remaining air ran out. We smashed the upper part of the glass to let some air in, otherwise we would have suffocated. On ground level, dramatic video shows a group of people attempting a rescue before the ground gives way beneath them. Across this city of 12 million, the rising floodwaters turn streets into raging rivers, trapping drivers in their cars and residents in their homes. Around 100,000 people have now been evacuated. And the crooked CCP literally said five people died. I'm like, bitch, really? Five people died? Because when I watched the video, I saw at least 100 people on the train. But OK, CCP. But again, I've never trusted them. These are the same people who bought us the coronavirus. So on that note, I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip. And it's showing like literally a lot of the video that I was posting earlier today on Instagram and then on the Discord. Um, it's showing a lot of the devastation, the things that went down in New York. So you guys go ahead and check this out. Even in a crisis, the city that never sleeps is committed to keeping its doors open. New Yorkers are famed for their persistence, but these torrential floods are pushing this city to its limits. Flooding has turned cars and buses into boats. Oh, the cars are floating! These passengers have been forced to surf their seats. This is what climate change looks like, guys. This is what climate change does. Across New York, there is resilience and even nonchalance. But the severity of this devastation is historic. These floods have been fatal. So far, over 20 have reportedly been killed. And the figure, like these waters, is rising fast as extreme weather intensifies across America. New York recorded more rain yesterday, the first day of September, than it usually sees the entire month of September. The past few days of Hurricane Ida and the wildfires in the West and the unprecedented flash floods in New York and New Jersey is yet another reminder that these extreme storms and the climate crisis, crisis are here. The consequences have been catastrophic for one of the world's most famous cities. Here, many have fled. This city is not built for this much water. Homes have been turned into death traps. The basements where people sleep have been engorged. These scenes are happening across New York, New Jersey and Philadelphia. Climate change is overwhelming the cities many expect to be safe. The places erected for humans to work and live now find themselves under duress by extreme weather. The irony is with much of the East Coast submerged, city dwellers are now the equivalent of fish out of water. All right, so you guys just saw that video. And like I said, it's really devastating all the things that have been going on. I have a bunch of New York subscribers. I call them my nutty New Yorkers. And you guys know I used to do my meet and greets in New York. I haven't been there since everything shut down because of C-19, but like New York is a beautiful place and my heart really breaks seeing like just so much devastation in such a huge city, knowing that so many people are going to be affected. So it's a lot going on and I just kind of want to go really deep with this. I want to go a little bit esoterical. I don't know if it's just me. I asked a lot of people in the Discord and a lot of people are kind of feeling the same way. I just, y'all know me, I don't really believe in coincidences. And I just find it very just weird, all of these coincidences around this Hurricane Ida and Kanye West. So I want to kind of break that down for you guys during this podcast. So um, if you guys do not know, let's take it back to August 29th. On Sunday, August 29th, um, Kanye West's uh, record label, they basically released his Donda album. The album was named after his mother. And so they released the album. And this album was released the same day that Hurricane Ida was touching down in Louisiana. OK. And what was also ironic about this is that that was the 16 year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. 
Hurricane Katrina decimated New Orleans and many other cities on the Gulf Coast. 16 years to the day that Hurricane Ida hit, which is also the day that Kanye West decided to drop the Donda album, okay? Which was very interesting because he was a very, you know, intricate part of the drama that went on during that time of Katrina when he stood up on the stage at the hurricane relief thing and basically said that George Bush didn't care about black people. That is what really made a name for Kanye West at that time. So it was very interesting to me that he was dropping his album that same day. And what else I also found disturbing is that on that album, there's a song called Hurricane. Of all titles, of all you know days it could be put out, he releases a song called Hurricane. And on that song, um, The Weeknd is on there, Little Baby's on there. And, you know, it's not a bad song per se, you know, it has a hot beat, Little Baby, you know, did his thing. But a lot of people are currently talking about it because in that album, Hurricane, on that song, he's basically insinuating that he cheated on Kim Kardashian. So that's what a lot of the news media and the gossip outlets are focusing on. But for me, I'm more interested in the lyrics that The Weeknd was singing. They kind of, you know, kind of sent chills up my spine when he was singing these lyrics. So I got a chance to actually sit down and listen to the song today. And I listened to it after all of this stuff that I found out went on in New York. So let me go ahead and um, just sing you guys the lyrics and I'll play it for you later in the podcast, which you know, we can't play music on YouTube, honey. So the first chorus goes like this. All the lights out for me, lightning strikes the beach, 80 degrees, warm it up for me. Finally free, found the God in me. I want to see, I can walk on water. Thousand miles from the shore, I can float on water. Father, hold me close. Don't let me drown. I know you won't. So those were the lyrics. And a few things in those lyrics kind of sent shivers up my spine because if you know anything about hurricanes, to get a perfect storm, you need very warm water. That is why hurricanes always, you know, that is why hurricanes always create themselves in the Atlantic because Atlantic waters are super warm compared to the Pacific, which is on the West Coast. That's why there's no hurricanes out there. You need the right amount of moisture and warmth. And the degree that a, that a hurricane needs to basically develop is 80 degree weather, okay? Here goes a news clipping here. 80 degree weather to create the perfect storm for a hurricane. So it's very interesting that he says 80 degrees warm it up for me okay then he talks about you know he can walk on water um he's a thousand miles for the sh from the shore he can float on water don't let him drown that was just very weird and eerie to me kind of foreshadowing because there was some who left comments on my instagram page um about the things that they went through last night in new york you know, somebody even wrote how they almost drowned in their car. The car in front of them, the people had to get out and get on top of the roof of their car. And she realized with her not being able to swim, she could be next. So she started backing up and honking and trying to get people to back up. So that way she could make a U-turn and literally drive into oncoming traffic to get away from the floodwaters. It was that bad in certain parts of New York. People were literally running for their lives. So when I hear him talking about, you know, Father, hold me close. Don't let me drown. I can float on water. A lot of people were having to try to float on the water and walk through the water and things like that. So it's really just eerie when you watch the videos and you tie these lyrics to it. And then in his second chorus near the outro, he says, no more dark me. I know you're watching me. 80 degrees, burning up the leaves. Finally, I'm free. Finally, I'm free. As I go out to sea, I can walk on water. Won't you shine your light? Demon stuck on my shoulder. Father, hold me close. Don't let me drown. I know you won't. So again, there goes another 80 degree reference. Um, a demon on his shoulder. Him talking about going out to sea, walk 